Hi everyone, how are you? This is Diego El Flaco from Colombia and today I want to present you a way to create a button but using the properties uh, within the components, right? Now we can define properties. So let's see what I have here. Uh, this is yeah, uh, the button component, a simple one, but now I, yeah, I tested the way to define properties. What does that mean and what does yeah, how does using properties help us? I think that the best way to describe it is that now we can simplify our components. We don't need to create tons of variants there. Of course, we are going to continue using variants, but depending on the case. When would be that case when visually the element is changing? And remember that properties are defined only for three or more than only that they are defined for three um, scenarios. Which ones are them? Uh, you could define a property if you want to to change the text content inside of it. So the content property. The other one is to turn on and off the visibility of a layer. And the other one is when you want to swap an instance or a component. You want to change it for another one without uh, yeah without getting inside the component you just by selecting the the main component you just can from there reviewing the properties in the in the right side of the screen you can change it so let's see the example here in my playground i can just bring here my button this one i think is the one that i want to bring yes i think this yeah so what do I have here? I have here my properties. So if I want to change the name here, it's OK. It could be also directly here. It's not uh, yeah, too much problem or too much change. But imagine the case that you would have, I don't know, a lot of them. So if you would have many, just with one, you can just go ahead and change your button, right, label. So that helps a lot. The other one is to turn on and off elements. So I have here my left icon and my right icon. And if you notice, if I turn them on below, it will give me the chance to change between other ones. Of course, in this case, I have prepared here my icon page, page with only four icons. But if you have more, and if it's your case, you can just by clicking your button, your your instance there, you just can go ahead and change if you need it, right? Also, this one will have the same app capability, right? And what about this one? By using what we have now, the absolute position, you could create things like this one, a batch. And by uh, yeah, defining its constraint properly, it will always remember the place to be located, right? So let's see how I create this one and let's try to create it here with you. So let's delete this one. Let me just go back here. I have a button and let's create a frame. Let's rename it as button two. Inside of it, let's play the text button right and let's turn this into um into auto layout and let's put this one as eight and turn this one also as eight and create a stroke now i have my button what i need to add here is my icons so i am going to bring them from here in the local components icons let us add this one here and again, with Shift I, I'm bringing these local components, and now I want to bring this chevron here. So I'm just locating these ones here, and I think we're ready. What what else I'm missing here? The batch. So let's create a batch here inside this one. Of course, you could just change your colors if you need them. Let's I'm now nah, let's turn this one to. A simple one with a stroke right 
a red one, let's say, just, just testing something there. Let's align this one like this. So what do I need to do with this one now is to define it as an absolute position. Whenever I click here, it will move it from the yeah, standard flow that I have there and I manually or by using this absolute position, right, X and Y, and I can uh, yeah, place it. Something really important is also to define the constraint because if I don't do that, when the button grows, it won't be, uh, yeah, remember its location. Now, with that, it's, uh, I think that it's working pretty good, this button. So, um, before defining the, the, the variance, I'm going to define the properties. And let me turn off these ones, because by default, I want them to be off, right? So, from here, I need to create my component, and let's call it enable here, enable, and let's start defining the properties. Now I'm, I need to, to turn it then on, and then I can just turn it off if I need it. So as I mentioned, here at the layer level, I want to turn it, it on and on, apply a Boolean, Boolean property. So I need here to show the left icon and here I want to at the layer level to show I am creating a new one, prop, a new property to show the right icon and the same for the batch a new property why I'm creating new ones because if I use the same one at the same time if I turn on and off the the, the toggle it will turn all at the same time, on or off, depending on the case, of course. So that's why I need to create different ones. So here show batch, right? Now with these ones, I want these two to be also, uh, uh, to be able to, to swap uh, with another instance. So here, where do I do that is here when the the component or the element is shown, I need to create a component property here. So instance, or I like to use change left icon, and the same for this one. Here, change right icon, right? And just to finish this content, I also want this to be available uh, at the top level to be editable. So here I just need to create here apply text property and this is just a simple text. I could change to label or whatever and set the default component there. So from here I'm only able to see the properties. I cannot uh, yeah, turn them on and off. How would you test that? By duplicating this and creating an instance, right? From the instance level you can do that. Turn this on and off. A small, um, yeah, a, a small thing there that it's really important, or this is really useful for me, is that you can organize these properties. If you hover over, he, hover here, you can organize them. So I want to have the change left icon first, and then below it the possibility to, sorry to show them at the beginning and then to change it. And the same here, show right and then show, change right. And at the first level, I want the label because it's a more common use case. So as you see here, it's more organized. I have here my label, right? And only if I turn on my icon, then I can change it. So that makes a, a lot of sense. I don't have to have everything there displayed if I'm not using them. And only if I define it as be um, uh, to, to, to swap that instance. So in the case of the batch, I didn't uh, yeah, mm, define it. So it is okay for me now. So let's leave it like this one here. And let's create the variance, with this, which is the last part here. So now I can turn this off. 
I'm not deleting it, just turning them off. And from here, I need to create my uh, variant. So a tricky here, a tricky thing here is that if I duplicate them, right, I'm having the, the, the instance, I need to detach it and to create a new one again here, and this will be over it, right? But if I create from here the variants and I test the properties, let's test it here, what happens is, is that the first property, it's okay, but when you change to the second one, they aren't there. What? That's a problem, because uh, now I have to go back again and define everything. A cool tricky trick there is that if you just duplicate it, it will be there. So let's do reset, change to variant three, and now I have them there defined. Uh, it's something that it's working like that. I'm not quite sure if I am the one that doesn't um, that don't know how to do that, but let's let's see. I think that uh, in this way is working uh, good. So let me just define the hover here. Of course, I need to to define the property which is state, state, and let's change it, this one as enabled, this one is hover, and this one, let's set this as focus. And just quickly go here, turn, no, sorry, turn this one to uh, gray, and it's okay there, and this one to a darker gray, and turning this into white. Something really important to have in mind that if you have something hidden, do remember to turn them on so you can test the things there. So to be sure that the contrast is working properly. So in this case, I need just for this one to change them to white, right? Now I think that this one to change them to white. Now this is working fine. And I now I can again go back and turn them turn them off. And voila, we have here our button. I can just bring it here to button two, which was the one that I have created recently, and just play here with these ones as I did and changing this if you need it, right? And that's it. Thank you very much. And I hope that this, uh, yeah, this helps you help you creating this. So just go ahead and tell me what happened in your case. Bye bye.